The best way to understand surface area is to compare and contrast it with perimeter, another fundamental idea in geometry. We know that the perimeter of a shape is the total length of all the outside edges added together. Similarly, surface area is the total area of all of the outside faces added together. Specifically, perimeter applies to two-dimensional shapes, like a square, whereas surface area applies to three-dimensional shapes, like a cube. Even more specifically, perimeter is a way of turning a two-dimensional shape into a one-dimensional measurement, and surface area is a way of turning a three-dimensional shape into a two-dimensional measurement. To find the perimeter, we need to identify all of the outside edges. In this case, we can clearly see that the square has four sides. We need to do something similar with surface area, but it's trickier because we have to think in three dimensions, which is hard when our picture is drawn on a two-dimensional screen or paper. In the case of the cube, we have six faces to identify, some of which are obscured by others. The back, the left side, the bottom, the top, the right side, and the front. To find the perimeter, we ignore the direction and position of each side and just focus on how long it is. The perimeter of the square would be the total length of these four lines added together. The same is true for surface area. In the case of the cube, each face is a square, so we're really just thinking about the three-dimensional cube as six two-dimensional squares. The surface area would be the total area of these six squares added together. The most common question I get asked about surface area is what are the formulas I need to memorize? But in my opinion, this is not a great way to think about surface area. Like perimeter, we are better off thinking about surface area conceptually and building the formula based on the specific situation that we're given. For example, there's really only one perimeter formula that we need to memorize, and that's for circles. For some reason, we have a special name for the perimeter of a circle, the circumference, and we know the formula is 2 times pi times the radius. On the SAT, this formula is given to us in the reference chart. But circumference is the only perimeter formula given to us in the reference chart. We might memorize that the perimeter of a square is four times the side length, but that's kind of obvious just by knowing what a square is. Similarly, some people memorize the formula for the perimeter of a rectangle as twice the length plus twice the width. But is it really that hard to just look at a picture of a rectangle and get the perimeter by adding the sides? Plus, it's not very long before we get to situations where formulas don't exist. For something as simple as a triangle, we really have no choice but to find the perimeter by adding up all the sides. There's no formula that would provide a shortcut. Surface area is going to behave the same way. Let's review a few formulas that you could memorize if you really wanted to, but you'll also see that it's easy to derive the surface area by adding up the areas of each face. The simplest three-dimensional shape is a cube, which has the same length for every side. The formula is six times the side length squared. We can see pretty easily where this comes from. The back of the cube is a square with side lengths of s. The area of the square is s squared. We can also see that the cube is composed of six of these squares. The back, the left side, the bottom, the top, the right side, and the front. Now it should be obvious where the formula comes from. There are six faces with the area of s squared, so 6s squared. A rectangular prism is similar, but you can already see that the formula is more complex because the length, width, and height are all going to be different distances. Some people want to memorize the formula at the top, but I find it just as easy to figure it out by adding up the faces. This time, let's start with the bottom, which is a rectangle with the length and width as its dimensions, so the area would be the length times the width. The back is also a rectangle, and it also uses the length as one side, but the other side uses the height, so the area for this face is the length times the height. The left side uses the height and width, so the area is the width times the height. Now we can see where each part of the formula comes from, and then each area is doubled because each face has a twin. The bottom and the top, the back and the front, and the left and the right. Again, this isn't a formula you need to memorize if you understand the concept of surface area and are capable of keeping track of all the faces. In fact, I worry that the formula opens the door to traps when the SAT adds twist to the question that requires to be flexible. For example, what if they asked for the exterior surface area of a box with no lid? We could try manipulating the formula to account for this twist, but what if we change the wrong part? Personally, I prefer to think about the outside faces individually. We have a bottom, a back, a left side, a front, and a right side. I don't have to worry about subtracting the top lid because I just don't include it in the first place. Formulas can be risky because they lock us into rigid steps that might not work for every situation. 
There is one exception where memorizing the formula might be worth your time. Cylinders can be hard for people to understand because the outside is curved. Most people understand that the top is a circle and the bottom is identical. The SAT reference chart reminds us that the area of a circle is pi times the radius squared, so it should be clear why the formula for surface area starts with 2 pi r squared. It's harder for people to visualize what's going on with the curved middle section of the cylinder, but it's actually quite simple. Imagine an empty toilet paper roll that you cut open and unroll. It would flatten to the shape of a rectangle. One side of the rectangle is obviously the height of the cylinder, but the other side is more complicated. Remember that this rectangle is wrapped around the circles, so the length of the rectangle is the circumference of the circle, which we know is 2 pi times the radius. Now it should be clear why the end of the surface area formula is 2 pi r h. To be clear, it's very unlikely that you would need to find the surface area of a cylinder on the SAT. If you have literally every other SAT formula and concept fully and confidently memorized, then by all means, make an effort to memorize the surface area of a cylinder. But this is definitely not a high priority for most people. Let's take a look at an even crazier example. This is the formula for the surface area of a right rectangular pyramid. What do you think? Should you memorize this? Absolutely not. First of all, the chance that you would need to find the surface area of a pyramid on the SAT is barely above 0%. And second, even if you did need the formula, do you really think that you could confidently write it down from memory and use it correctly? I highly doubt it. You're much better off breaking a pyramid down into its parts. A rectangular pyramid is really just a rectangle and four triangles. The rectangle is easy to spot. Its dimensions are the length and the width, so its area is the length times the width. We can hopefully see that there are two types of triangles. On the back left, the yellow triangle has a base that matches with the width of the rectangle. Also in the back, we see a different triangle with a base that matches the length of the rectangle. The SAT reference chart reminds us that the area of a triangle is one half the base times the height. But if we just use the height that we were given for the pyramid, we will be falling into a trap. Notice that the given height is not on either triangle. It's completely inside the pyramid, not on any of the faces. In order to find the heights of the triangles, we need to make a right triangle inside of the pyramid where the other leg is half the length of the rectangle and the hypotenuse is actually on the triangular face. We can use this new height to find the area of both the left and right side triangles. We can make yet another right triangle for the other height. This time the other leg is half the width and the hypotenuse is the height for both the front and back triangles. If this is confusing, don't worry about it. Like I said, it is extremely unlikely that you will need to calculate the surface area of a rectangular pyramid on your SAT. There's a slight chance you will have to use Pythagorean theorem to find a distance in or on a three-dimensional shape, but that's a lesson for another day. For now, understand why we would not want to waste time memorizing the formula for the rectangular pyramid. The SAT could easily give us different information where the formula would stop being accurate. For example, they could make the base of the pyramid a square and specifically give us the height of the triangular faces. In this case, finding the surface area is much easier. Since all of the triangles are the same size and the given height is exactly what we need for the area of a triangle, we can just find the area of one triangle and multiply it by four. Just don't forget to add in the area of the square base. Hopefully this reminds you of the key strategy for surface area. Don't overthink it. We don't need formulas for perimeter because we understand the concept. Just add up the lengths of all the outside edges. For surface area, figure out what the outside faces look like. They're gonna be simple shapes like rectangles, triangles, and circles. Break the three-dimensional shape apart into the simpler two-dimensional shapes for each face. Find those individual areas, then add them all together. On the whole, surface area is a very minor concept on the SAT. It will only come up once in a while, and it will often be very straightforward. If you happen to be unlucky and get a complicated shape, use your scratch paper to stay organized as you break it down into smaller pieces and steps. Good luck, thanks for watching, and please subscribe.